Hi everybody, welcome back to another very exciting Adobe Live. This is day number two with the compos compositing battle between Lisa Carney and me. How are you, Lisa? You're Hi, on this sweetie, side. I'm doing great. <laughs> awesome. See, it looks like we're side by side, right? Like we're like, if I don't push my hand out too much, you guys really can't tell that she's not next to me, but Lisa is- Are here. you on this side of me? No, the other side. That's it. Okay, yeah. I'll look at you. So, well. so if I want to talk to you, like, yeah, like, hi, Lisa. See, it looks like we're really <laughs> right next to each other. <laughs> awesome. Thank exactly. you guys so much for joining us. This is day number two, once again, of the compositing battle. Yesterday, Lisa and I battled it out for about an hour um, doing a composite. But before that, Lisa ran through some awesome, awesome description of what her work is like she is a i know there's a technical term but i just call it like movie poster designer but i it, you're uh what is the technical term lisa well it's kind of interesting i'm actually more of a finisher than a designer so a designers finisher. come up with the ideas you know right. the, the design and then i rebuild them from scratch nice. although i do design now and again awesome awesome so it looks like it's uh, it says that they can't hear me so well, so let me just make sure my microphone is up a little louder. Let me know if that's a little better. Um, I know that somebody in the chat said that my mic is a bit low, but hopefully that fixed it. Let me know if that is better, guys. Cool. Um, I know it's going to take a couple of seconds for you guys to, to catch up, but before we get into all of that, let me just make sure that I run through some housekeeping items. First of all, the schedule. We started the day at 7.30 with Howard Pinsky doing get us getting started in Adobe XD. Then we had the wonderful Kathleen Martin doing the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, which we will review in approximately an hour and a half. So make sure that you submit your work into Discord so that we could um, give you our thoughts. Lisa and I will review those with you a little later on. And then Lisa, this is not biased or anything, but this is going to be the best stream of the day, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, Photoshop compositing with you and me. <laughs> and after us, we have the wonderful Julia Masalska doing Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. Then we have Nick Schafe with Claudie from Print My Soul. At 2 p.m., we have Jesse Schulwarter doing Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge. Then we're going to do a draw along with Pal T. Webster. And we're going to end the day with Voodoo Val and Panda doing a design off at 3 p.m. Pacific. So it's a full, full day. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're excited to be with you for the next two hours. And it's going to be another fun compositing day. Um, I'm looking at the comments and I see that Seth McCullough wrote the finisher. I can see a movie poster on that. Yeah, well, that could be you, Lisa, the finisher. Yeah, it may be, huh? And in yeah. fact, uh, Steve called me a hit woman. I'm like, yeah, I kind of like that. <laughs> awesome. So let me just, um, first of all, welcome everybody to the stream. Um, you guys have been amazing. You guys were awesome yesterday. We had a lot of great feedback. I, I know you got messages, Lisa, and I got messages as well. Yeah. Um, so thank you guys so much for being so awesome. And also, I just want to ask you guys where you guys are watching from. I'm in the UK, and as I said earlier, Lisa is in LA, although it looks like we're right next to each other. So thank you guys yeah. so much for, for, for watching us. And let me know if there's any more problems with the audio, but I think you guys said it sounds good now. Cool. Let me, it says that I'm, uh, I don't know if that was an old message or not, but it says that I'm still a little quiet. So I'm going to try to bump up the volume as much as I can. And you guys let me know if that. I know I'm, I'm pretty it. loud. So just have to shout over me. Cool. All right, guys. So um, let, before we continue, I quickly want to mention that we do have the daily creator, uh, creative challenge um, feedback. And let me just show you my screen so you can see how to submit it. You can go into daily uh, into the behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop page. Make sure that you click on that big blue button so you can follow along with Kathleen during those 10 challenges. And also click on the community chat link, which will get you over into Discord. And you'll be able to see the work that you guys have been submitting under the feedback tab under current challenge. And you'll see the awesome poster that uh, Kathleen created today is a tiger and it has these torn edges and it looks amazing so i'm really looking forward to see what you guys come up with using kathleen's technique so yeah, yeah. and participate it's it's good get in there yeah get in there and play right for sure for sure for sure um let me oh man i have a lot of messages it looks like uh that's better regarding the volume tony thank you so much awesome 
So, Lisa, do you have anything that you want to share before we get started? I know yesterday you had a, a poster, maybe uh, not a poster, a uh, uh, P uh, PDF that you share with us on Dropbox. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, there's going to be a Dropbox link that we're going to drop in today. Um, I just want to re remind everybody in case um, um, anyone's new, you can find me at Lisa, lisacarney.com if you mm -hmm. have questions. And my website's lisacarney.com. And don't call me. Don't ever call me. Just send me an email <laughs> if you want a response. And um, yeah, I, uh, I've got a bunch of freebies to give away. Uh, we're talking about movie posters. And just in case there are new viewers today from yes, not that weren't there yesterday, I just want to remind people where they can find samples to inspire them, which would be at impawards.com. Mm -hmm. And it's a great resource to find what's current, what's going on, where to get ideas. And Jesus, we talked yesterday a little bit about um, inspiration or ripoff right that and so i'm not advocating you steal ideas from people but just like an exercise or a course study it's a, it's a way of getting you started in a roadmap to mm -hmm. to follow along kind of like i don't know he's used in art school we used to have to go to the museums and sketch the sculptures we did right. for my illustration class we had to do a hundred sculpture sketches every semester and it's kind of the digital version of that of, right of, uh, practicing so I just want to remind people of that. And then in the same spirit is uh, talking about where to get things, where to get your items. We had a bunch of comments yesterday, I don't know if you noticed about people saying, finding their resources is one of the hardest things for mm -hmm. them. Where do they get their materials? And so that's part of what I'd like to talk about today as we go through uh, the, the, the challenge about where to get your stock photography, where to get your plugins, how to make a distressed looks, distress looks, sorry brushes, flares, that kind of stuff. All that fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and can can we just remind people to shoot their own stuff? Uh, yeah. I wanna, I, I'm serious. Do you ever find, like, I, and I, I get guilty of this as well, where I am working on a job and I'm looking for stock, looking for stock. I need a hand. And then it occurs to me, just pull out your phone and shoot a hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes the answer is right in front of you. And and you were telling me before we went live that one of the things that you like find the most amazing is when you actually get good photos to work with. Apparently, you guys don't get good photos to work with. Would this shock you guys? It you does. That yeah. The crap we get is uh, it's astounding, especially given the amount of money that is spent on these films. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't want to talk about that yet. Uh, yeah, given the amount of money, it is shocking to me. And any more, quite seriously, and I know there's people in the chat like Dan Eckhoff who can uh, attest to this, is that, um, man, you get a good shot now and you're like, oh, look at that. <laughs> this is incredible. Um, Frank Ockenfeld's one of my favorite shooters. And when he works on a project, he did, I think he shot Sinners, mm -hmm. which is, I think, a Hulu or Netflix. And the photography came in, and it was so stellar. It was such a treat. So, yeah, just just a little reminder. <laughs> yeah, you can shoot your own photos. Yeah, and um, yeah. So, do you want to? What do you What do you think, honey? Should well, we yeah. Let, let, let's Let's just get right into it. I don't know if you have your file open that you worked on yesterday, but I, I kind of want to show people what I came up with yesterday. Absolutely. And, and then I'll Thank show you. show your screen. So, if I go to mine first. I was finally able to remove those watermarks as soon as we went off the stream. Lo and behold, the watermarks went away. Remember, I was having issues yesterday <laughs> removing those watermarks after I uh, shared the image, but there it is. This is the the final result without watermarks, and we had a lot of awesome names for movies um, <laughs> for for my particular movie and yours as well. But yeah, it's. It's super, super uh, interesting that you, what you can come up with using basically the same assets. So Lisa- Hey, Jesus, I'm gonna interrupt you for one second. Someone said my audio is oh, faded out. Let can, me uh, it looks good on my end, but you tell me. Ah, the technology. It's oh, it's so fun, so fun. Cool, so I, I just um, changed the audio a little bit, so let me know if Okay. That's better for everybody. Cool. Testing one, two, three. Testing, yeah, testing one, two, three. three. Awesome. Cool. So Lisa, uh, this is Lisa's project from yesterday. <laughs> okay. I just have to comment how funny it is to me how dark I am versus you. Right? Right. You were so light and fluffy and sweet <laughs> and, and, and happy. And I'm like, ah. Dinosaurs, monsters are coming. Monsters are coming yeah. 
And I even put a kitten in there, but the kitten's not very happy. Well, the kitten, the kitten currently is over your head. Like, if you watch the stream, you're covering the kitten. I think. Because oh. you got kitten ears now, see that? <laughs> well, I kind of have kitten ears anyway, don't I? Yeah, yeah. You know, I should make a brush of my... I think Daniel Eckhoff said I should make a brush out of my hair. Oh, okay, I should do that. I should sell Lisa's hairbrush with my hair. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, here's my dark... Uh, uh, I'm locked in poster cool so the agenda for today is basically the same thing we're gonna use the images that we have in our libraries panel and we're gonna create another composite another movie poster so that should be pretty fun and what I want to ask you guys in the chat is to give us ideas we haven't prepared anything clearly <laughs> because if we prepared and this is our work then then I don't know why Adobe has us here but <laughs> <laughs> oh, <ouch. laughs> no, I'm talking about me, not you, not you. No, not you. no it's, it's not good. You. Yeah. Well, um, and Jesus, we, we talked about this yesterday a little bit. Yeah. Uh, in my world, my world is actually quite scripted. And right. I'm used to very much having a plan, and this is the work. And for my fine art, it's, right. it's fly by the seat of your pants. So this is an interesting change. For sure. So um, I just want to ask you guys, just like we did yesterday in the chat, let us know what type of genre you, we should work on today. Any any particular themes you guys want to see? Yesterday I took the challenge of doing a, uh, I think it was, what do you guys call it? Like a pandemic love story or something like that. So that's, that's what rom -com. I went. Rom-com. Hey, rom pandemic rom-com. Pandemic rom -com. Rom -com. Yeah, pandemic rom-com. Yeah. Uh, so we could, oh, Tim is suggesting a musical. Let's do some sci-fi horror. Uh, meteoroid. Uh, sci-fi movie is another suggestion so I pr I'm, I'm definitely not going to do anything romantic today because <laughs> so, uh, Philippa suggested a rom-com so aliens I'm definitely going to go more sci-fi more more dark today Lisa I don't know if you're going to stick with the uh, dark theme today or you're going <laughs> to yeah probably I don't know dark times dark times I don't know who knows we'll sci-fi we'll no romance today zombie rom-com meteor and aliens um, you know what? I, see, the thing is, is I, I like the zombie rom com idea, but I don't want to do, do rom coms. <laughs> Animal oh, adventure. I don't know. It might become your it might become your niche. Ooh, you never know. zombie cats. That's interesting. Yeah. Documentary. Overwhelming roman Overwhelming romantic movie. Gotta love aliens. All right, so I'm definitely gonna do some aliens. I see a lot of alien stuff. Sci fi. Animal adventure. Uh, dark mythology. Ooh, that one's cool. Superhero. So yeah, mm. maybe I'll do a combination of like superhero and aliens. I just don't know if we have. You the know, that kind of. Yeah. Well, that suits you. So tell you what. Um, uh, can I show a couple little? Yeah. Yeah. yeah go ahead. Go ahead. Touching tricks while yeah. you maybe look for look for some stock. Cool. One of the things I like to do is is kind of go over a few techniques just so when you guys are playing along, and mm -hmm. I do hope you're playing along that they're doing their own stuff with us. Um, it's sometimes nice to have little, little tidbits on how to do some effects. So this uh, X-Men poster, one of the things we talked about, I talked about yesterday a little bit, but I'd like to show it better, is painting rim light and different ways of doing that. So I'd like to show a quick sample, if that's okay. Please. And by the way, um, X-Men Days of Future Past is my favorite X-Men movie. So I'm so excited that you're gonna work on on this particular piece. Yeah, and Anybody? I didn't do this finish, but um, but that's all right. But you still have the files, so it's all good. I still have the files. We're gonna yeah. talk about it, and and it's pretty basic. So um, the standard way of doing uh, rim light is often just painting with white. So this is a before mm -hmm. and after, and I'm just gonna turn the layer off so you can see it. So it's just hand painting, and I I don't mean to minimize just hand painting because it's painted very well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people will do what we call a channel pull to do mm -hmm. highlights. And um, I will show that in, in fact, I'm going to show that right now. So let's say you are not a great illustrator. Let's say I'm going to make a new layer here, painted edge. And I take a paintbrush and I just tip pick maybe a standard soft flow brush. And I start painting and maybe I should paint with white. Second, please. Alberto Silva commented Juno. Yes, that is the actress who played Juno. Yeah, it is. So I'm just very loosely painting with a, a, a light white airbrush. My file, my layer is not linked. 
to the original. So generally with a rim light, you would link it. Mm -hmm. And then you can go in and paint. Well, some of us, myself included, I'm not the best illustrator in the whole world. So rather than doing that, what you might want to do is a channel pull. You guys will notice part of our hair is chunked out, but don't worry about this for that demo. So a channel pull is quite literally going to your channels, finding one that has good contrast. You got to be really careful here. You have to think about what you're looking for and what you're looking for is the contrast between the hair. You don't care what's going on on the inside. It's mm -hmm. you have to remember what the purpose of the channel pull is for. So let's say for giggles, I'm going to pick the green channel and why it's called the channel pull is you click on the channel. This one's going to be the green one, grab it by its name and pull it down and make a copy. I've now made a channel pull. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but a channel is a stored selection. So what is black is hidden or not available. What's white is available. So I'm going to do a levels move. Lisa says levels, command L. And what I want to do is I just want to make it blacker. So the highlights are what I get instead. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I might bump up the highlights a little bit to make them a little crunchier. Now that I've done that, I have the highlight selected, basically. How do you load a channel selection? You could do it by grabbing it by its name and drag it to the little icon with the marching ants. Or you can command, hold the command key down, click on the icon for that channel and click. It'll give you that little hand symbol with the, with the marching ants on it. And then you can go back to your layers, make a new layer, painted rim. By the way, there's a third way of loading a channel. Do you know what it is? Uh, under the menu? No. Oh, that's the, I, there's a fourth way of loading a channel. Yeah, because you can load it here. Yeah, you can press Control Alt and then the number next to the channel, and then that'll load it. So if you oh. go to the, into the channels panel, there's a, there's a number next to it, and then you can load it. So right so, there, number six. Yeah. So Control Alt six in that case will load that channel as a selection, or Command Option. Thank you for that. Command Option and the number on the Mac. Good to know your quick keys. Hey, listen, let's start the day out right. Name everything, dear God Almighty, name everything. I would call that green channel copy for highlight. And I might say with levels move. Why would I do that? I would do that because when I come back and I have a new shot, like let's say they pick a different shot of her and I have to redo it. Mm -hmm. I, will, I want to remember what I did. Right. Or if I have to share the file with a, a friendly retoucher. Um, great. Now I'm going to go back to my layers palette. I'm on my layer that I've made called painted rim. Mm -hmm. And can you guys see there's marching ants going on? And now I can just paint the white through the channel Super where cool. I want it. Super cool. So it's a way of getting rim light or I'm going to hide them. Command H. It's a way of getting a nice rim without having to be a great illustrator. And then on her chin, that's a little much right there. So I might go in, manage my windows here a little better, and mask out the rim on, to give it more of a rim light here. Mm -hmm. So it's just, hopefully you can see it, it's right there. So that's a very traditional way, two ways, just literally hand painting it or loading a channel and painting it. Now on this one, the rim light's pretty heavy because it's a, you know, sci-fi, it's got crazy, action-y looking stuff. So there's the rim light. She's got a really heavy rim light painted on her chin and her under lip. Mm -hmm. Now, why does she have that? Because look at the environment she's in. It's a big explosion environment and they wanted bounce light on her. Mm -hmm. So while I'm doing this in a file that's all on its own, you have to kind of take the context of the piece. All right. I want to make sure I didn't accidentally hit that window. Are, you, are we still together, Jesus? Oh, yeah. Yeah, good. I uh, remember that window that came down yesterday that I not kicked myself out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, you're, you're, you're still there. Don't worry. Okay, awesome. So everybody understands this is rim light 101. This is a basic way of doing it. Now I want to show you a different way of doing it. That's even more exciting, I think. So I'm going to delete that, that layer. And now I'm going to show you a whole different process to get this look. Ooh. Now what that is, is you take your figure, mm -hmm. your item, whatever, and you fill it with black. 
Okay, so I could do it this way. Command click on the layer of her, make a new layer, fill with black. Uh, command delete fills with the background color. So that's, that's how easy it is to make a, a selection of her, right? I'm gonna throw that away. You then put that base black on the mode called screen. This is very important. Base black, you know, it's just a black copy of her, put it on screen mode. And most of you guys should know that when a, a layer is on the mode called screen, black disappears. Mm -hmm. And then you do that same thing where we paint it, right? Why did we do this? We did this because now I want to introduce color because look, she's in a very colorful scene. Right. Oh, we might change this color a bunch. Hmm. We don't know what color the comp's going to end up being. You know, when we do these movie posters, you change the color 16 times this Sunday. <laughs> so instead, all you have to do is add an adjustment layer to this. And on this one, we added a color balance. So I'm going to do it with you for just a second. Let's turn that one off. I'm going to hold the option key mm -hmm. and click on the add a adjustment layer. And I'm going to go to color balance, add color to highlight, label everything, please. I beg of you, please, <laughs> please, please. And what I'm going to do is in the midtones, I'm going to make it really, really red. You see how the color's getting, that's midtones. Then I'm going to go here to the highlights and maybe I'll make it magenta. So what you end up doing is you can get tri-colored or even four colored, depending on how your shadow goes mm -hmm. with one move. So if you look at what we had before, look how much yellow and orange is in there. Yellow and orange. I'm going to open up that super cool in the yeah, in the shadows, the shadows got moved, but there's really very little shadow. The yellows got added and green mm -hmm. and red. And then the mid-tones. And then the highlights. So again, I want to repeat why this is happening. What's happening is that color balance is reacting to, let me get rid of this so the file doesn't look crazy. The, the color balance is reacting to the shading that is happening on this black layer. Mm -hmm. So basically what this is, so because we put it on a black layer and we linked it, I have gray in there now. It's not just white. Right. Before it was just, we just painted with white, white, mm -hmm. right? So now that that layer has grays. It has white, gray, and black. And then the color balance goes, oh, there's white, gray, and black. How do you want the grays? With the grays, we said add a lot of yellow mm -hmm. and a lot of, a lot of red. The highlights, the whites, what do you want to happen on the whites? A lot of yellow, less red. Super cool. Isn't that amazing? Super, so, super So um, cool. I'm sorry, I hope I didn't make that too rudimentary, but what it does is a lot, look at her coat. I mean, look how awesome this, look at that color you get. White, now it's tricolor. Super amazing. And, right? And then, thank you, I'm glad you like it. Um, I didn't invent it. But Jesus, the coolest thing is, so imagine they change this to a nighttime. Mm -hmm. uh, a nighttime, let's see if I can pick something real quick. I'm going to put a gradient map on here. Uh huh. Mm. So that would happen, right? In the movie industry where the poster is daytime and oh, then for whatever reason God, they yes. decide now it's nighttime, you need yeah. to change everything, not yeah. just, yeah. Exactly. And then you can change the colors. So now it's a different color. Mm hmm. Now on this one, because I put a gradient map, I had to put that on color mode. Right. Okay, because it changed the value of the mm -hmm. color too much. But look, oh, you want purple and yellow? Cool. You want orange and yellow? Cool. Can you guys imagine for one second if you had to hand paint these colors all over again? Right, right. Oh my god. Right? Okay, so, sorry, I get really excited about this. No, it's not taking uh, too long. No, 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 it's great. I love it. I'm sure the people in watching love it. So let us know in the chat if you like it. Why don't you guys hit that like button for me if you like oh it? Oh my gosh, yeah, give us a like, please. Yeah. That, that's Follow a, us. Yeah, that's like, like uh, I think the first time that I started talking about this like button was when I did my challenge, or it wasn't a challenge, it was a stream with Claudi, and I just kept asking people to hit that like button because I like the number. I, I like watching the number go up. So we're at 24 right now. Come on, guys, we need more than that. Oh, but yeah. we could do better than that, right? Yeah, no, it, it looks it looks amazing. And uh, it's super cool The because I always talk about how I'm a big control freak when it comes to Photoshop, hopefully not in real life. But 
I like that you have everything in an individual layer and at any one point you can go and edit any particular element without affecting yeah. the previous element. Yeah. Well, and uh, let's talk real world life here for a minute. Um, most of us, we want to, I, I'm, I'm presuming most people out there, you want a job, you want to work in, this is professional work. This is not just a, um, a hobby, <laughs> hopefully for a lot of us. And so when you're working, you have to have professional practices. You have to right. realize that it's not just how do you want to build it, right. it's how are you going to share it with someone else. So some of the people in the chat, like Dan Eckhoff, he and I share jobs all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give him a crappy file that he can't right. work on. Right, right. No, Makes total it's, sense. It's rude. So listen, real quickly, Jesus, because I should wrap this up. The, on the um, Patrick Stewart one, Xavier, I think his name is. Yep. Uh, look, the side area, he didn't have anything mm -hmm. uh, shape-wise. He had a little bit. Mm -hmm. They painted a little yellow highlight. Just That's very traditional, like we just did. Spelled wrong because I spelled it. Uh, that's just hand-painted yellow. Do you remember that channel pull I did on her hair? Yep, yep. It's the same move. Someone did a channel pull. How do you know that? Because I assure you, someone did not hand paint that texture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, right. So hopefully you guys can see that. So, um, and then what they did is they did that white rim light, just like we talked about before. Only look what they did for the arm. There was nothing there. They pulled stuff out that you couldn't see. That's mm -hmm. illustrated. Mm -hmm. And then again, the color balance on top. And you can really see that color balance effect here. Look, it goes from orange to yellow. That is amazing. Isn't that great? And then this is... The finished piece you can see it in the finished piece nice so hopefully you guys will find that useful i'm not sure i'll be doing that on our challenge today but at least it's it's something to um to work on awesome um, i have a few other things to show but i don't know if you want to wait jesus till later we can we can, we can in later. we can start compositing and maybe take a little a little break and then show awesome um but before we continue cool. i just got to remind everybody about the daily creative challenge so let me get into my screen We'll be reviewing the daily creative challenge in approximately, what is it, in approximately one hour. So make sure that you submit your work into the Discord community. You can find it at behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop and scroll down to where it says join the community chat. Click on that and that will open up Discord on the left hand side under feedback, current challenge. That's where Lisa and I will be reviewing your work today this is the challenge that kathleen martin worked on where she created this awesome awesome tiger with the torn edges so make sure that you submit your work we'll be reviewing it in about give or take an hour cool hey we got 82 likes i think or something like that yay <laughs> um well just to get some more like oh actually tim just did it i was going to Oh, no, Tim posted something else. I'm going to go ahead, Jesus, with your permission and put the Dropbox link. Yes. So. Um, okay, here it goes. Explain to people what that Dropbox link is. My lovelies, because I love you so, I have <laughs> put some goodies for you. And um, they're called freebies. Ooh. And what I'm giving you guys are textures and brushes. And this is not the actual file. There's more in the folder. In fact, maybe I should launch the Dropbox link myself. Look at all my codes here. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> awesome. Hang on one second. Yeah. So I basically have a Dropbox link for you mm -hmm. guys where you can get these freebies. So there's curves and gradients, there's brushes, there's textures, and then these um, kind of handouts I've made with how to's uh, instructions and reminders are in there as well. And I just want to remind people that these are the brushes that like a professional movie poster finisher is using to create their work. So these are not like, oh, yeah, I just came up with this random brush for the stream. These, these are the real deal. Yeah, no, these are actually what I use on jobs. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So and we'll be using them today. Hopefully you'll use some today and, and the color gradients and whatnot. And you can go from there. Sounds good. Now, before we continue, I want to do like a little quick survey. So what I'm going to do is switch over to my screen and we're on your website, Lisa, lisacarney.com. If you hover over oh. portfolio, you'll see the link labeled theatrical. Now, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, so I love it that you worked on Spider-Man uh, Far From Home. 
But I want you guys to scroll down and look at the type of work that Lisa creates. And this is where she uses the brushes that she's sharing with us. So it's awesome. Now my question is, out of all the movies that Lisa has worked on, which one's your favorite? I'm going to have to go with Spider-Man because I'm a big Spider-Man fan. But let us know out of all these movie posters, which one is your favorite in terms of the movie? I, cannot, that Jesus, work. I can't even tell you how hard that Spider-Man poster was. It looks so easy. though. It's the one with Berlin you're looking at, right? Yeah. yeah well, first of all, it doesn't that, look easy to me, but yes, it's oh awesome. Oh my <laughs> God, the ground. The ground was this crappy stock shot of, I uh -huh. forgot what plots that is. Right. And I had to redo the whole line uh -huh. of the of the ground oh my lord it's oh. actually a little painful for me so to how, how long did it picture. take you to complete something like this like the spider-man one for example how many hours of work from from you were put into okay this? so um i'm gonna not edit and i love my job and i love my industry let me just mm -hmm. start with that so i'm not trying to be derogatory right but oftentimes these take so long because they have to go through so many people's approval mm, right uh and it can be really painful now I happen to be, I have a, there's a production manager at BLT, her name's Jen Baird, and she is exquisite. She's absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. And when I work on projects like that with her, the time gets cut down tremendously mm -hmm. because she's a really good decision maker. She and I can collaborate on what we think we should do for the first round before it goes to the client. Mm -hmm. So something like this goes, for me, I have to show it to her. She shows it to the account exec, the, excuse me, the creative director, art directors who did it. Mm -hmm. Then the account executive at the company who is responsible for the project, and then it goes to the studio. Wow. So that's a lot of people. That's a so lot. So that, of I'm going to guess that Spider-Man was a two-day job. Two, so like, meaning two eight-hour days or like 48 hours two total? Or, it could be anywhere from 16 hours to 20 hours, depending on okay. what kind of cool. day it was. But awesome. that's my memory. Yeah. Awesome. Well, awesome work. Awesome work. Yay. All right, so I just wanted to show people the kind of work that you do and also where you're using these brushes that you kindly offer for free. And they're, they're in that Dropbox link. I, I think I saw Tim post it in the chat. So if you don't have those brushes, make sure you get them. What I did is I also downloaded them uh, today because you used them yesterday in your project. And I was like, yep. wait a minute, yep. that's unfair advantage. I want these pro brushes. So I downloaded yeah. them today. So today we're even. <laughs> Well, and you know, later, I think you're going to talk about libraries a little bit. I don't yeah. go anywhere. I don't go anywhere without my brushes. It right. is a hundred percent how I do my job. hundred percent. Cool. That's really Our, important to know. Awesome. Uh, so, Seth posted, by the way, if I actually saw heredity and I'm like, are you kidding? No way. <laughs> I don't see any horror movies and the pictures <laughs> that, oh, I'm sure I heard it was a good film, but no horror films for me. All right, Lisa, are you ready to get started on today's challenge? I am. So what are you going to go with? So, I decided to do aliens, by the way, and I'm sorry for interrupting. No, no worries. Um, I'm going to do a little pet cemetery thing, I think. And pet I, cemetery? Because I really want to show, mm -hmm, I want to show how I would suggest people go about doing these kind of projects. Yesterday okay. was, uh, boy, that's not a judgment, I'll it. Sorry. Um, yesterday was really willy nilly and just fly by the seat of your pants. Mm -hmm. And I find for me, I really need to start with a sketch. I need okay. to have some kind of roadmap, even if it's rudimentary, about where I'm going to go, mm -hmm. and then build. Otherwise, I feel like I'm I'm spinning my wheels. So okay. some people, Jesus, I think might like to do it the way you do, just kind of throw the spaghetti on and, and see yeah. what lands. Which well, is totally valid. I I don't necessarily like doing that in real work, but like I I think it's fun just asking people like, oh, an alien. So I'm going to go with the aliens, and that's what I was 100%. doing when you were when you were explaining. So I downloaded all these photos of aliens and see which one which one works. And then, That's um, awesome. yeah, I don't know if you want to also take suggestions from the chat, but I think I'll do a little bit of that throughout the stream. Also, uh, people are saying that they really like your hair. I like your hair as well. Like my hair, this yeah. hair or my hair brushes? <laughs> oh, well, both, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, you have to say my hair now because now cool. I'm going to get my feelings hurt. <laughs> yeah, totally kidding. Totally cool. kidding. All right. So. Cool. And I will, um, hey, just to answer your question, sorry, um, I will totally take suggestions. I'm just going to start here and see what, see what happens. Cool, guys. So uh, I saw a lot of alien stuff in the chat. So that's what I went with. And I just, uh oh, I thought I had my computer plugged in, but I don't give me one second when I plug it in. Well, I'm going to just, I'm going to get started. I'm just going to start working. There we go. It's all good. All plugged in now. All right. So. We're gonna just start working and I'm gonna switch over to my screen, give you a minute to set up there, Lisa, just to show right. you guys what I downloaded. I went into 
uh, this this is where Lisa and I are sharing all the images we're using for the stream and I just downloaded all these different alien photos so I don't really know which one I'm gonna use I, I downloaded like this one that looks you know like a stereotypical alien like the, the classic green man with the big head so I don't know if I'm gonna go with that but then as I was searching I came up with this super cool photo it's like a cosplayer or, or something um, this is woman with this awesome awesome body art so I think I may use her if Adobe stock lets me grab her you have to be nice there she is so I'll let you guys decide should I go with the uh, the classic green man alien or should I go with this woman uh, with the awesome awesome cosplay here so let me know what you guys think I should use and I know we're behind or you guys are behind a couple seconds so I'll just wait and see what you guys suggest so like make sure you type quickly because like the first three or four comments of either or then I'll I'll go with that I like her her woman okay so right away I think it's it's the woman oh the woman the cosplay is so so good all right cool so I'm gonna go with that <laughs> just because I already got like a whole bunch of women alien ones so Let's see, I think that for the, because yesterday you were talking about like the different types of movie posters, uh, Lisa. Yeah. And maybe yeah. for this one, I don't know if it'll work, to be honest, but maybe for this one, I, I could probably maybe do like a container, but I can't really, I don't have like the bottom par part of her body. So I don't know. I don't know if I can do a container type of, of, of movie, like, a, you know, because you were talking about like double right. exposure container. Yeah. In fact, let me, I'm going to call this up real quick so we can talk yeah. about this. Cool. Um, so I'm going to switch over to your screen then if you're going to talk about that. Okay. Yeah. So what we talked about a little bit yesterday was containers and, and containers are a way of containing uh, images. Mm -hmm. It's really helpful when you have crap images, by the way, or very disparate images, things mm -hmm. that don't go go well together. So these are a couple different styles. Uh, sometimes you use it as a mask mm -hmm. and they're very similar in a weird way. And then this is another kind of container. This is the same show just done with you know, three different container ideas, notions. So clearly right. someone had a, a plan here and they were going with it. Right, right. So yeah, there you go. Containers. It's great self. Awesome. All right, I'm going to keep going on mine. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Keep going on yours. And it looks like I'm having some technical difficulties here. So I may have to restart my Photoshop. So I'll keep it on your screen. So I'm just going to do the cat. Hey, you guys, when I start files, uh, Photoshop defaults to pass through on its layer sets. And I like to put them on normal. That way I can keep my elements very separate. So I can make a grab, select two layers and click on the um, layer set icon here. Sorry, let me make some room so you can see what's going on here. There we go. And click on the layer set and keep everything kind of neat. Cause you know, we all say we're gonna go back and fix something. We never do, you know how it is. We never <laughs> have time, never. So um, anyway, that's that's just a little something. So right now I'm gonna build out this cat shape. And for the cat shape, I didn't pick a cat. I picked a dog. And why that is, is the cats that I had, I didn't like the shape of the fur. So this is kind of a reminder to look at outside the box. Like even if you want a cat, it doesn't mean you have to pick a cat. You can pick a different animal. Mm -hmm. And I don't like the silhouette all that great. So I'm gonna pick a different silhouette for the top of the hair. And we talked about this a little bit yesterday. There's a lot of comping you can do without actually masking. So if I just put this cat in my cat folder and it's on normal mode right now, and I mm -hmm. turn, it, turn it to multiply, the white will disappear on the mode called multiply. And right. I can just see what I wanna do. However, because I put the layer mode of the folder on normal, now you can't see my base. You guys see this? Mm -hmm. I want to show you some of the errors that or not errors, but potential trouble you have. So I only use this as I'm building and then I'll go back in and change the modes as needed. Okay. I just want to let people know about that. Nice. I'm going to keep going. If I want to see this, I'll have to just put the cat on pass through mode and then I can see what I'm getting. Yeah. So right now I'm thinking, what else can I add? Come on guys, help me out. What else should I add to this? Should I make, I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want to keep it like 
somewhat realistic in terms of like a composite with like a background or something or if I want to make it like a double exposure effect type of thing so that, that's kind of where I'm stuck hmm or you know what she's kind of like reaching out like she's touching something so maybe I could make it seem as if you were she were like looking out a window I don't know hmm what oh, to do what to so do the question from Kristen is are you doing a container what are the steps for that so if I were gonna go for a container um, well the first step is to mask out the background right and what I did here was something very simple I just used the select subject so I went to select select subject and then I refined the mask you can paint with black to hide white to reveal pretty basic stuff so far nothing too too crazy uh, yet and if I wanted to do a container for like um, what Lisa was talking about, then I could use that layer mask in a group. Oops, sorry about that. That's not the group. I could make a selection at a layer mask by holding Control on Windows, Command on the Mac, create a group, and then create a layer mask inside uh, on that group. So now anything that I drop inside of that group will um, have that that. Uh, layer mask applied to it see that so then i can start blending it with blending modes and things like that if i wanted to go that route so maybe that's what i'll do uh, maybe i'll try to go for like a double exposure type of, of effect so let let's go with that i'm i i'm deci i decided it's better to decide than to stop it's, you know like be yeah see like i grew up i grew up playing soccer and for those of you who are soccer players or football fans might might know this if you if you played especially at high levels like when you're playing they tell you you either go for the ball or you don't. You don't want to stay in the middle because that's the worst place to be, yeah. right? So if you're undecided, yeah. either go for it or don't, but don't stay in the middle. So I'm just going to go with the container idea and see what I can make out of it. Hopefully it works out. Um, you know what? Can I, um, I'm going to throw out here. You can actually find container or designs, like graphic designs on Adobe Stock mm -hmm. and use that as a base graphic for your, for your uh, composition. So, so Adobe Stock can also give you a, a, a container to actually stick your stuff in. Right. Just saying. All right. So I think I know what I'm going to go with. Because I actually, I'm trying to remember something that I saw in one of your presentations. I think it was either yesterday or maybe even before. But I saw that you were talking, you were talking about double exposure, like movie yeah. posters or something like that. So that's what I'm going to go with. Yeah, I have. Um, yeah, I have. Yeah. All right, yes, guys. Yes, I did. Ooh, we're about to crack 1,000 viewers. We got 998. <gasps> so send the link to your yeah. friends. We only need two of your friends to join us so we can have 1,000. Thanks for that reminder. Come on, we need uh, bragging rights here, please. Yeah. And please like us. I want a thumbs up, please. Yeah. I want to send it to my mama when we're done. <laughs> Let me see if, we, oh, you know what? I think there's like a futuristic city type of thing here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is like Tokyo or something. So maybe this could be like the, the background. Just make it look like super futuristic and let's see love how angry i am the, you're angry yeah i just love i have like all this angry art you know angry art <laughs> angry art yeah all so right. let's see if this works all right so this kind of works so just to kind of ex i mean this is definitely not going to be my final piece but just trying to like let people know what i'm doing here so what i did here is i decided to um, obviously mask out this alien mask her out of her background and I gave her a white background and the reason that I did that was to put it into a group so now I'm thinking about that as a single layer and then with this background this you know I think it's Japan this uh, Japan background what I did is I changed the blending mode to lighten lighten just simply looks at the pixels in the layer that you're on in the pixels below and it just asks itself is it which of the pixels is brighter and it just keeps the brightest. So like, if there's nothing brighter than white, right? So then you're always gonna have that white um, container because there's nothing brighter than white. And then I can just manipulate the image within the alien. And I could also, if I wanted to use like even advanced techniques like blend if, uh, this layer controls the layer that you're on, the underlying controls the layers below. So I could start hiding you know pixels based on on their brightness you know so like maybe i don't want the bright pix uh, the dark pixels in the background image right so i can just hide those or maybe i want to hide the bright pixels in the background you know so it really really depends on on what you want 
or if I want the shadows of the alien to come up, I can click on the shadow point here in the underlying layer and drag to the right. And I can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac to split those in half and then create a smooth transition. And let me just switch over to my screen so maybe you guys could, could really see what I'm doing that uh, doing here. See that? See how I'm just getting the entire background here. But if I want the shadows of this alien to come up, see how I can just drag to the right and then hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac and split those in half. See that? So now it really feels like it's more... Uh, it's blended better. It's really part of, of the image more. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll use this technique. Cool. All right. We passed 1000, 1013. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate that. Hey, Zeus, I don't know how you multitask so well. It's just astounding. Um, just you astounding. know what? Only when it comes to this, not anything else in my life. Really? <laughs> Unfortunately. I, um, hey, uh, can I show a little technique? Yeah, I showed sure. it yesterday, but I'm using it again. I just want to uh, reiterate how sure. cool it is. Let me switch so, over to your screen, and there you are. So I have a tendency to work around a piece, and what I mean by that is I'm not doing like just the cat. I'm kind of doing the texture, the foreground, the background, a little bit all mishmashy if you will just mm -hmm. as i start putting things together and for example i think i want this this crevice in the front mm -hmm. in the front of my piece here but i'm not sure and uh, a blending mode's not really working for me like in terms of uh, luminosity or one of these so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use blend if to do the masking so okay. i'm holding the control key while i'm on the layer and i'm going to blending options and i'm going to say hey photoshop take those highlights, anything that's white, take it out. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice it's really crunchy critter. But if you hold the option key and click on the delta or the triangle in between, you can actually smooth it out and make it, it's almost like a, a channel pull. Mm -hmm. Super so cool. So then that way I can drop it in. Yeah, and it just makes it really quick. And then, yeah, I can go in and mask a little more if I need to, because mm -hmm. uh, I do want it rough. Right, but right. it's just so quick. And um, again, why I'm forever trying to talk about channel pulls or alternate ways of putting pieces in is our clients change their mind all the time and they'll end up making this, oh, that's nice, but we want this other rock shot that's two frames over. And if you do a blend if you don't have to redo a, um, a channel pull. Cool, so I got something to show on blend if now that you're talking about that. But before we get to that, there's a question by our good friend Seth, how often do you build, modify your own brushes in the field? Oh, all the time. All there the time. Go. All the time. So, so for example, if let's say the client really dug this picture here and liked the texture of that, I might have to make a brush out of that hair and then use it on the rest of the piece. Right. So um, I'm going to do a little plug, if you don't mind. It's a yeah, little yeah, shameless please. plug. But I do have a course on Creative Live that's all about how to build brushes and what brushes are Ooh. and how to change the settings. And I don't know, you might find it handy to, to figure out. Not, Seth doesn't need help with that because Seth is an expert. But other folks who might be new might, might be interested in that kind of thing. Okay, shameless plug. No worries, all good. So I, I'm gonna switch over to my screen. You were talking about Blend If. And yeah. so something I wanted to do with this piece now was to sort of enhance the highlights that are inside of the city, like the neon signs. So I was thinking of like the best way of masking them. And I thought, well, maybe I could just do the blend if thing again, right? So I could basically hide, uh, and you know, it might be better if I just disable all the layers, right? So, so you guys can really see what I'm doing. It might be better if I just hide all the dark areas in this image, right? So yeah. This works, right? I, I took away all the dark areas, right? There you go. So I'm, I'm left only with the highlights, which is great. But now I'm not really working with transparency. If you see the layer thumbnail, it you can see the entire image. So how can I work with transparency? Very simple. All I need to do is right click on the layer and convert it into a smart object and look at the layer thumbnail now. Now this is actual transparency. Let me undo that and show you one other thing. Um, if I hold Control on Windows, Command on the Mac, and click on the layer thumbnail, notice that I select the entire layer. It just goes around the layer, right? But if I convert it into a smart object, and in the layer thumbnail, you'll see the transparency checkboard. When I do the same thing, hold Control on Windows, Command on the Mac, and click on that layer thumbnail, I will load the actual pixels that um, I selected with a blend if. 
So now that that happens, I can control this even better because I can bring back um, all the other layers and see that, see how I'm just enhancing the brightest areas. And now I can do all kinds of things. I can blur this, for example, so I can go into a filter, blur, Gaussian blur and blur it a little bit. And I can change the blending mode to like overlay and I'm just enhancing the highlights of the image. So that's, I was trying to see if that works. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this effect as of now, but I was thinking of, of enhancing those highlights. Also, I can apply a blend diff to this smart object and I can bring the shadows um, as well from the alien layer just because I don't really want the shadows to have that brighten, brightening effect. But that is just a cool way of just making like a super quick selection and getting real transparency and, and just doing things uh, fast. So I don't know if I'm gonna keep this yet. Or you know what, you know what? I actually really like maybe the colors and not so much the city. I don't know yet. So we're still playing around with this. And I don't I don't like the fact that she doesn't have a body. So maybe what I'll do is, I was just looking that I have this alien body here that I downloaded, that one there. So maybe I'll just use her body somehow, some way. And I know it's not gonna match perfect, but it's probably better than nothing. So let me just try to match the body onto to her. Yeah, this is definitely not the same angle, but it's all right, we'll make it work. Somehow, where there's a will, there's a way, right? So we'll Absolutely. Figure, figure this out. And let me switch over to the battle screen so you guys can see what Lisa's doing now that I'm, I'm doing a little bit more thinking than actual compositing. That's really cool looking, Jesus. I like what you got going on. I, can't, I have to look to the right to see his work and I really like it. So I am, uh, I'm putting a wet cat fur on mine Ooh. because I, uh, I don't like the, um, uh, I don't like the hair that I have. I think I need to, uh, hang on. I need to hide my, my window here. My zoom window shows up right where my palette is. Of course. Hey, uh, select subject. Did you use that on yours? I did, yes. I use select subject all the time, and I take the refine brush, this this little uh, brush that's the second brush down on yep. the camera left side, and I just real quickly paint over the edge, mm -hmm. super fast. Cool. And then sometimes I click the radius to smart radius, mm -hmm. and that just gives me a super fast selection. And then I can mask my little kitty fur. And then on this cat, I'm just using it for the fur. I don't, I don't want her face. Right. Because, and so now I just need to make the fur black. It's just real fast. It just has a, a cooler edge, I think. Mm-hmm. Because you get these pointy ears. So now I need to get rid of the old ears. Yeah, I need to really make her black. There we go. Angry kitty. You having fun, Jesus? Oh yeah. Now I'm trying to figure out this sure. alien alien body thing. I don't know if it's gonna work. I already committed to it though, so I have to make it work. I'm gonna switch over to my screen in a moment, guys. I'm just. <laughs> Let me just switch over so you guys can see what I have going on here. Um, there you go. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to match that. And I, oh my God, I did such a bad job in the mask here. So let me just fix it. I'm having fun. I'm just saying, in case someone's curious. Oops, wrong, wrong screen. There we are. All right. right, I need more fur. You need more fur. More fur. Fur is flying, my friends. Fur is flying. How are people doing out there? Yeah, are enjoying you guys, this? Yeah, let us oh, know good. if you guys are enjoying it, what you've enjoyed so far. All right, so uh, it's it's now or never. I'm just gonna gonna do this alien alien thing. Okay, so let's see how. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to blend it because the perspective is so off. 
But she's an alien, so she doesn't have to have like the perfect. That's right. She can be tweaky. Yeah. You know what? Um, what I'll do is actually, I think, since the her other arm is up, we probably don't need this arm to show. So let me hide this one. There we go. All right. Cool. I'm cheating. I'm just cupping my fur from one side to the other. Oh, this is gonna. Uh, you know what? This is gonna work. I know it. I know that this will work. Let's see. Now, I'm gonna paint. See, because it doesn't have to be perfect. I just need her to have a body. You know, and I don't have time to go into like Adobe Stock and to like make sure that I find something that that works. But if she has a body, that's all I really care about, right? We should talk about this for a second uh, about going into Adobe Stock or time, 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 time. It's always about time. Right. So one of the things, I don't know if you guys can see on my screen, I think you can, that I have the Adobe Stock library up and it is so fast to go through here and find stuff or click on, so I'm on the Siberian cat and I can command click and click on find similar and mm -hmm. it will launch similar results inside Adobe Stock. Cool. So it's so fast, it really is. And um, uh, you can load it in from here. If you are lucky enough that you work in um, places where you can actually load up uh, the cloud while mm -hmm. you're working, mm -hmm. you can, it, it takes seconds. And as you and I saw yesterday in the comments, there's so many people who time is the issue. They spend so much time looking for elements and this way you can get stuff fast and easy. You can put it in your, your pieces without um, mm -hmm uh licensing them right so you don't have to um commit you can right. you can wait and so that's really handy anyway hopefully you guys oh look side sweet kitties how nice is that all right now enough on my preaching no you're not preaching at all good advice so, so can i go my next one again sorry yeah. i feel like i'm hogging all this time no 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 go right ahead um pixel squid we did this yesterday you guys i swear to buddha Pixel Squid is one of my all-time favorite resources for uh, 3D objects. Uh, Jesus, as we said yesterday, is a 3D dude. He can make stuff in uh, Adobe Dimension. He's really clever at utilizing items. You can get 3D items in Adobe Stock as well. Like you'll see this, mm -hmm. there's a 3D item button here in the Adobe Stock. And now it just gave me kittens in 3D. Um, but because I'm not quite so savvy with that yet, I'm working on it. Uh, I use Pixel Squid, and on Pixel Squid, you can go in. It's a it's a website where you can search for, let's see, cat, and it'll come up with cat and different kind of cats that you can mm -hmm. have. Or for me, uh, for this project, I wanted crosses. I think I just put cross. Um, it's a little challenging because I can't spell. <laughs> But where you and then see that weathered wooden cross i really liked that so i picked that and you guys who are new today you'll know you'll see up here in photoshop that under extensions you can get a pixel squid extension and as i showed yesterday what i can do is like let's say for example i want to add um, a cross or a house mm -hmm. so what i want to do is i want to actually first be where i want to be on the file either be on the top so i can see what i'm doing or be in my area so i'm going to make a mid mid ground area right mid ground spelled right spelled wrong who cares and then i'm gonna say i want that house and i'm just gonna click on my pixel squid extension mm -hmm. it's gonna drop a layer of that a smart object of that house right on the piece and inside the viewer i can angle it to the size of, to the the perspective i want right and that's the perspective i want then you go to your smart object see the little smart object you guys can see that uh icon and now I can command T and transform it. Super cool. And then we have a question in the chat. What is Pixel Squid? Is that a plugin? How does it work? Well, um, it's a, a oh, Jesus, I don't know how to say this. It's a, a freestanding software. It's an application that you mm -hmm. go to on the web that you have to either subscribe to or they have tons of free stuff or you can buy per piece if you want. Like I have a subscription because I use it for everything. And um, I'm, everything, I use it a lot. And uh, then with they have made a extension that you can use and cool. load it through Photoshop. Oh, that's awesome. my Pixel Squid for now. 
and I'm running into some technical difficulties, Lisa, so I'll keep the screen on you because... Totally fine, I'm, I'm I It looks like my computer crashed. I had a, I had a restart. So sorry about it's that. It's actually guys. me. I put a virus. Oh, I shouldn't say virus <laughs> word. Sorry. Well, I because did, I wanted all the attention. I did download your folder from Dropbox. So. <laughs> um, I'm just saying. It yeah. might have been me. All right. So I'm working on my foreground right now. And I'm going to add some elements. And I think you guys can see. In fact, let me walk through the piece real quick. Mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier I like to work around the piece. That way I don't get hyper-focused in one area. And I can kind of keep proceeding. So mm -hmm. I had a little bit of a sketch. Um, there's my base and inside the base is the cat. I think I'm gonna move my cat out just so I have a little more flexibility. So on the base, I have white and a painted wall. That painted wall texture is in the goodies. So you guys mm -hmm. can have that if you want it. And I just put it on a light opacity, like 50% for now. I may come back later. There's my cat build and he's, he's out of a few files. He's got a body, mm -hmm. a base body, that dog. Do you know what's interesting? I haven't, the dog's gone at this point. So there's my dog and I used that to start. And then I didn't like the edges. The edges looked a little too frou-frou. Right, right. And so I wanted more cat ears and then I wanted the wet edges. And now if you look, the, the dog's gone. So this happens sometimes when I'm building the original elements not even in there, which is why you don't license until you need to. Exactly. And then I put a little, little angry face in there, which um, he probably needs to have a darker face, but I'll deal with that later. So I'm not worried about color or tone so much either right now. Mm -hmm. And then the mid ground. So I'm starting to fill the mid area and I just painted a big old thing of black to block out some area. In fact, I'm going to add some using my dust brush. Dust brush. Question for Lisa. How do you change the lighting of the model from pixel squid if it doesn't match the rest of the scene? Uh, you can paint with curves and stuff. I'll see if I can get to that in a minute. Like I just changed the, uh, I'll show you what I did do on this guy um, in just a second. So give me a minute, I'll come right back to that. So you guys, there's brushes here for you. And I have a cloud brush and a smoke plume brush and a dust brush. And my dust brush looks like this. I'm gonna paint it off in the corner with black so you can see it. Yeah. It is probably the brush I use most. I use it cool. for atmosphere. So right now I'm just gonna paint some black atmosphere on the side of my cat so I'm not confused. And then what I'll do is turn around and paint light atmosphere. I suggest you name the file, the layer, pardon me, with the brush you used so that when cool. you come back later, you, so, you remember what it was. I mean, you know how everything that could go wrong goes wrong when you are working live. So I had some 100%. issues with my computer and look at what happened to my file when I try to reopen it. But the funny thing is, is that if I, you know, it was right here. See, I saved it 21 seconds ago because I just restarted Photoshop. I turned it on again and there's my file. So, yep, things always happen when you go live. So now I'm gonna have to go extra fast to catch up to you, Lisa. Oh, I don't know, I don't know if you sorry, can see, see what happened uh, to my file. No, I can't, uh, but I'll, I'll, it'll catch up on the stream in just a second. All right, so I'm just gonna go super quick now without explaining. Yeah. Let's do this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, just keep going on mine. I will share with you though. Do you guys remember a long time ago there was a movie called Titanic and it was a big deal? And I worked for a gal named Lori Bloom and we had to do this water extension uh -huh. for a fold out, like a tri-fold press release. It was a really big deal. And it was before content aware fill existed, unfortunately. And it was before 3D was so readily available for desktop. And I had to do a water extension that was enormous. And there was some virus that had gone around on Macs. Oh, no. And you could see the layers in the layers palette, like these little pictures you could see, mm -hmm. but the file was blank. All you had were checkers. Oh, wow. It was a four day build and we had to rebuild it in a day. Uh, so anytime this happens, I cry a little. Yeah, you, sometimes you do feel right, like you so, want to cry. I, I've lost work before yeah, hell and, yeah. and like, that's the only thing you can really do, cry besides that. There's not much you can do when you yeah. lose work. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty so awful. I'm just, gonna... I'm just um, doing my foreground here. Cool. I'm just going to go as fast as I can now. And it is what it is. No one's judging. Well, everyone's judging. Yeah, every Pretend we got, we got 1250 people watching <laughs> and judging. <laughs> Don't judge him. <laughs> um, cool. So I'm going to keep going. I am going to, I put a little texture 
a grunge file over the top and I put it on multiply mode. So here's the texture file. And when you put it on multiply mode, whatever is white will disappear and whatever's black will, will stay. And I think I'm putting my white layer back on. Pardon me. There we go. Yep, no worries. I, Cause I, I, now I want to have a little distraction. Like I don't want to be so fussy. I want to have a, a little bit of color on here. Now, when I put this on multiply and I put my cat on, look at me zooming through this. <laughs> it's a little dark. Now I was dark yesterday. Perhaps I shouldn't be too dark today. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to put a, a lightning <laughs> curve, a contrasting curve. And what I did is I linked it or clipped it. So I clipped it, I should call it. Uh, so what you do is you do a curve and you hold the option key and you click on the line between the two layers. And then that curve, which is lightning, the highlights will only lighten that layer. It won't lighten anything underneath it. See if I unclip it, it lightens the whole piece. If I clip it, it only lightens this. I piece. like how this is like you not going dark. You're like, I went I so dark yesterday. Today I got a friendly kitten. <laughs> I'm so awful, aren't I? Um, yeah, let's let it hit 1500. Someone's saying let's hit 1500. Textures are the best. I swear to God, these textures make the piece, I think. So I'm going back to Pixel Squid, and I can't say that 10 times fast. Pixel Squid, Pixel Squid. But I want to put those crosses in. So I'm going to start here. What I just forgot to do is be where I wanted to be. So please be careful about that. I get a little excited sometimes, and that's in the, let's say, would that be in the midground? Yes. So I'm going to put that under the foreground. And in fact, I need to make a foreground layer now. Uh, set foreground. Do you see how quickly? God, I can't spell. Uh, <laughs> do you see how quickly you can get out of control on your files with all your oh, layers? Yeah. So this way, I'm getting pretty. Um, I'm still. I'm doing okay. Like if I got hit by a bus and Jesus had to take over this file, he would come in and he'd go, "Oh, look! There's a background. There's a base. There's a cat. There's a." He could he could follow along. And I will tell you, I, and I'm not kidding, I have fired people that I've hired, contracted for work, wow. for giving me bad layers. Because it's time and money. It really is. It's uh, it's too expensive to have to pick up after somebody. Mm -hmm. It just is. I am now deciding I want my cross in the foreground, so I'm going to move that into a separate folder. I had a guy once who did a logo, he did a beautiful job, an illustrator, a digital illustrator. and. He had a bunch of uh, stars, little stars. It was a, a, a logo with a lot of bling. And every single star was on its own layer and it was all called layer one, one, two, three, four, five, up to 375. Oh my God. And I said, that is 100% unprofessional and you cannot give me a file like this. You and can't. you fired him? Yeah, I never hired him again. He, wow. Well, he also argued with me. He said I wasn't professional because, I mean, it, th that it was not cool that I called him unprofessional. <laughs> he was unprofessional. Um, <laughs> so rename your another? files or Lisa will fire you. Yeah, of course, Lisa. And yeah, also, well, yeah, because it's, yeah. Let me, let me switch over to your screen, but I also want to remind you guys to submit your work into Discord. We're going to be checking it out in about 20 minutes, I believe. Yeah, right. Oh, the day is flying, uh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, especially now that... My alien bodies is not working as, as well as I want it to, but it is what it is. We're gonna we're gonna make it work. You know what? It, it kind of looks like a Gustav Klimt piece. It's really beautiful. <laughs> well, thank you, Lisa. Thank you. I'm trying to. I think you should put gold gold overlay. Do you have a gold texture? Like gold yeah, well, texture? yeah. That's exactly what. I, oh, I don't know about gold, but I was thinking of doing like yeah, some a texture over it. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Um, I'm just gonna try to see what works best here. Okay, I'm gonna add some more crosses to my cemetery because I'm so happy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're gonna be like, oh, invite that dark lady back. Yeah, yeah, we love her compositing that lady with the dark images. They're great. So I gotta. This this cross is going into the middle ground. Got to have some scale going on here. Yeah. All right, I'm going to add another house, I think. So if anybody has anything to say about the uh, way her limbs look on my image, I dare you to find an alien and show me that I'm wrong. 
the aliens really don't have this type of body. There we go. Good enough for, for what we're doing today. All right. So she's got a body. All this work is just to make sure that she's got a body and that I'm not even 100% happy with it. That's all right. Oh, and actually, you guys can't see my screen, so let me let me do the battle screen. Are they looking at me? Yeah, they were looking at you. Oh, man. It's this... so weird to have someone watching, isn't it? Yep. Special. The voyeur is you. <laughs> Let's see, what other images? You know what? I, I think now that I was forced to restart, I don't even, even know if I'm happy with that. Okay, I've got a little problem here, so I'm going to go to... Adobe stock. Hmm. Sometimes Adobe stock, uh, we have a little bit of trouble while we're doing live stuff. Yeah. But it'll work. All right. Yeah. So I I'm just going to go through the website. We're just going to go with it, Lisa. We're just Ooh, I love that alien lady. That's just cool. Now I'm like compositing as fast as I can because we got like half an hour and I basically lost all the all the work I was doing. I was being so tedious when I'm sorry, <laughs> that I... sucks. <laughs> that happens on work all the time. Yeah. I don't even want to admit how many how often that happens. So I'm just gonna figure out what to do here. All right, I'm downloading. It's gonna take a minute. Let me see. What else do I have here? What else do I have? What else do I have? Um, ooh, maybe she could be some sort of water creature? Ooh, yeah. Let's see. I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll try it. You can tell that you and I are really concentrating now just because we are <laughs> sorry we're all like not looking like, at you guys not like doing quiet anything. yeah like we're by ourselves <laughs> we're just hanging out there's no yeah one, no one it's here. like work yeah we're just here guys like work. so I'm downloading some grassy bits because I think this looks pretty cool uh to put in my foreground mm -hmm. and I'm doing I use this all the time for comping I think I mentioned it earlier uh select subject so it's so fast right it really is. I, I spent there all that am. all that time creating a body for her. Now I have her submerged underwater. <laughs> oh, that's that's pretty cool. Let's did you see. so Jesus? Let me ask you on a production level. What happened? Did you not save it? Um. So the file got corrupted. I'm not sure why or how. Oh, it happened, okay. But yeah, it happened. So. Well, it's it's interesting because I meant to. Yeah, it 100 percent happens. Happens all the time. Uh, meant to say I kept saving and I kept thinking maybe I should tell them I'm saving. Yeah, I'm always I'm always saving. Save. So so yeah, I did save the file, but then when you would open the file, it just it just shows corrupted. Do you know what? I'm gonna uh, talk another boring production thing, but it's so important. I've got this Adobe stock image I'm using. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hit Command Shift S to save, and I'm gonna hit it'll highlight the name in blue. Cop I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna go back to the layer, double click on the name, and paste it. Command V. That is how easy it is to name your layers. So I don't ever want to hear people tell me how hard it is to name a layer. It's so hard to name your layers. No, just kidding. I agree with you 100%. Because it's just not. You got y'all ain't got no excuse. Okay? Yeah. No excuse. Zero excuses. All right. Now I'm just trying to color so, match uh, all this just so it looks Oh, cloud documents. Yeah, Tim, that's a good good suggestion, cloud documents. Yeah, so cloud documents are great if you're allowed to use them. So some places, um, like for entertainment, because of security issues, they're really hesitant to use some cloud documents. It really depends on what kind of the company is, and they just have to get certified uh, through the company. And I know Adobe is certified through many companies. You just have to be honest and talk about it with people so they don't freak out. Right. Is that a big concern? It's, it's a great like program. It is secure. It is 100% secure. You just have to get it approved. No, but what I'm saying is it a big concern for a lot of the companies you work with, security, I would imagine. Are you kidding? Oh, my, I'm sorry. That was rude. I did not mean that to be rude. It is 100% <laughs> the biggest issue that uh, in my industry. Wow. Or it, because of intellectual property theft. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a, it's a big deal. A really, really big deal. 
like um, on my site, you guys will notice if you check out my site at leastcarney.com, you will never see before and afters. You will never see a, a picture of a celebrity before because you do that in my business and you post it before, you're out. You'll never be hired again. Wow. Because it's uh, it's kind of like showing the hiney of the producers before mm -hmm. they get the work. You can't you can't do that. How are we doing on time? Doing okay. We got 15 minutes, guys. Remember to submit your work onto Discord for the Daily Creative Challenge review. We had Kathleen uh, Kathleen Martin working on a really cool tiger with some torn edges. So check it out. Make sure you submit your work. Lisa and I will be reviewing it shortly. We have 1,400 viewers. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. I don't think I've Thank seen you. this many on the chat before. Or, in the, yeah, in the chat. I don't think I've seen this many before. They like us. They really, really like us. Well, we hope you like us. Yeah. They like you, Lisa. They don't... They don't oh, they like they, you. They stand me. They, they like you. Oh, baby. Hey, uh, another little production technique. I know I mention this all the time. I want to find that house because the house that I put in here, I like it. And I want another one. But do you remember it was... It's attached to that extension manager mm -hmm. and because it's attached to the extension manager if i change it it'll change the new one that i just placed mm. and i don't want to have that happen so i'm gonna command control click i'm on a mac to find my my file and because i label everything i'll be able to find that shack cool now if i had that as layer one or layer whatever then how am i going to find it i'm not I'm not going to be able to find it so please label your layers i beg of you Please, please label right. your layers. Yeah. So now I'm going to go to this. And I'm using the exact same shack. I'm just going to turn it. So we got about 10 minutes. Oh, man. No. I'm not done. I'm going to put a girl in there or something. Let me do that real quick. All right, shack. Shack goes to the background. We know the pressure is on. It's kind of like the price is right, or when you have to, you're running for groceries or something. Yeah. I know that was a weird analogy. Sorry. You shouldn't the price is groceries. right. Not in this time of day. <laughs> <laughs> what? All right. Let me, uh... Oh, I'm so glad you guys joined us today, by the way. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. For... Thank you so much. Actually, you know what? I had an, I, I got a better idea for that, for that beam. Um, it's that I'm gonna use uh, Lisa's rain technique for that beam, using the fibers. Oh, the filter. fibers! Okay, yeah, fibers. Yeah. Filter. The fibers are awesome. Yeah. This will be good. All right. Oh my gosh, I'm starting to get that. That like, ah, oh, hurry, hurry. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> There we go. Something like that. Boom. Filter. I may blur it a little bit. Might be too strong, but well, I'll worry about that later. All right. I'm going to put a girl in. Didn't we have a grungy girl? There's a grungy girl in there, I think. Yeah. I'm just having trouble with my library, so we'll see. Oops, wrong. Yeah, I'm definitely having trouble with my library, so let's do it this way. All right, so this, I'm just going to put this, put it here at the bottom. I'm trying to figure out where it's going to go. I think it's going to Yeah, it should be perfect. Perfect, right there. And let's see. Uh, making sound effects now. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, yeah. Um, also, um, color. I don't know if we're going to have enough time to go through the color stuff that I was hoping to talk about, but mm -hmm. if you guys can download the PDFs and the color stuff, it's all explained in the PDFs, but the color lookup type tables, I actually save color lookup tables. So I have different looks that, mm -hmm. so I had the pet cemetery color lookup table look uh, already, and that allows me to load it. So this is the piece normally, and then this is the pet cemetery look I wanted. So if we don't get to it, don't worry. You got all can have the information because it'll be on the Dropbox. There you go. All in the Dropbox. We aim to please. Yeah. That is. And then uh, the other, 
sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh no, I was saying um, you're absolutely right. I'm not, I'm trying not to interrupt you. Uh, the other thing is, I, I, there's an open invitation I'd like to give you guys. If you have questions, you know, shoot me an email, and I'm happy to help when I can. And if you don't hear from me right away, you have to email me back because I do get like 150 emails a day for various things. So you just need to email me back and say, but, "Hey, I'm still out here." But don't call her. <laughs> don't ever call me. <laughs> don't. I hate. I hate talking on the phone. I really do. No wonder you never pick up my phone calls. No, I'm sorry. I pick up my mama's calls. Okay, well that's good. But she's about it. Because she's my mama. Of course. I hope I don't. I don't know how this this UFO beam thing is looking like. Let me know if you guys like it. What do you guys think? Uh, yeah. Let's. Someone's see. talking about dodging and burning. Uh, you what me. Dropbox link? Oh, allow me to help you. It's in the chat. Sorry. I am going to put that Dropbox link in one moment, please. And then, hey, Zeus, when we have, um, we're down to the last few minutes. Will you uh, give me a shout so I can show something? Yeah, we got about 10 minutes before we do the design feedback, guys. So make sure that you submit your work. We would love to check it out. So we got, yeah, we got that much time, Lisa, about nine minutes now. Awesome. Oh, it won't let me post the Dropbox links again. Oh, thank you, Tim, for posting that. It wouldn't let me redo it. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, I'm just going to darken this girl down. Boy, she is a sad looking mama. So I'm doing a, a few things because I'm rushing so bad. Uh, one, I darkened her down, but I want her, that outer rim of her hair to be dark. Mm -hmm. So I just linked a paint layer, just like we linked the color before and the curves. And right. then I can paint just on her and it only goes on her. And then it's really important to remember when you're doing composites that it's light against dark, dark against light. I think you always have to to remember that. So I've got dark hair on her and a dark cat, so you can't see her. So I need to lighten behind her. And I either have to lighten the cat or paint atmosphere something right. to, to have it come out. So right now I'm painting a little bit of atmosphere. I might want to go to my brushes and paint fur. Not like that though. Let's see. So that it's not just, I don't know, brush, dust brush. I'm going to go back to the dust just because I'm running out of time. Anyway, yeah. there's a lot of variety you can have. And she's got a line. Is that on her? No, that's on the graveyard. So I don't know if you guys can see this on your screen, but I have a line on her and that technique. I'll zoom in if you if, like. Let me, let me zoom into your screen if you want to show that. Cool. So I have a line going right across the top. And in fact, inside your goodies, you guys are going to have a curve and it's a solar curve. And when you have a solar curve, it'll show you lines that are not necessarily easy to see. The curve I have, I put in the Dropbox and you just load it here. You go load curve preset and you navigate to where I put that solar curve preset and it'll make this zigzag curve and then it'll show you lines where you might not be able to see them on your monitor and then because you know you've been listening you named everything because you're good proper production people i'm going to command control click and i'm going to go find the graveyard because i know it's this the cemetery that's causing that mm -hmm. and or the view of the mountains it's one of these and so it'll take me down up it's the view of the mountains and now i can mask it out not spend a half an hour searching for it because how many i know you guys have done that you guys have put something in and then you can't find it you've got a line or something and then throw the solar curve away i'm going to give her a rim light too cool and i'll switch back to the battle screen and by the way right next to our heads you can see our instagram so make sure that you follow us on instagram if you want to check us out yeah we like instagram love so let, have you guys had a chance to download Lisa's brushes? And if so, let us know in the chat what you think. 
Yeah. Seas. And Kyle, if you ever get a chance to see Kyle Webster on this Adobe Live, he is the most amazing thing on God's earth. He really oh, yeah. is. Yep. He's the reason I love everything about what he does. Um, hey Zeus, can I take, I'm gonna just look. Yeah, yeah, Everyone's you wanna. Everyone's getting their goodies. Can, I wanna do some color stuff real quick, if that's all right. Go ahead, yeah, go right ahead, yeah. All right, I'm gonna call my baby done. I'm gonna close this. So, uh, hey Zeus actually taught me some very amazing stuff and I wanna give him kudos for this. And it's about color and color matching. So seriously, Jesus, you showed it on a bald guy. I don't know if you remember, he was in a sunset. Yes. And it changed everything for me. So first thing I wanna show you is Catch-22. So this is, let's say for example, your client says, hey, we really like this poster. We want you to do this look. There's a way to do autocorrect. So I have this picture and it's from stock, it's from Adobe stock, and he's just a, a regular model looking guy. In Camera Raw, I crunched him up because the other guy is pretty crunchy looking, mm -hmm. right? So I did a clarity move texture and I made him black and white. I took all the color down here on the bottom, not sure if you can see it, but on the bottom, I took the vibrance and the saturation all the way down. All right, oh my God, I think it just crashed. Oh, that your computer have issues too? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, is that virus you were trying to give me? It's affecting your computer. It is. You gave it back. It's yeah. very transmittable, evidently. All right. All right. Well. Do you want to? You want me to come back into do. my screen while you? Yeah. Figure you that go. Out? Go. Go make some noise all right cool so uh, this is uh, i'm not happy where this ufo is and luckily that effect that i applied goes everywhere now that i have it in a group so i don't know i, I don't like it here because it kind of makes it seem like she's interacting with it so i don't know where i'm going to put it maybe maybe it doesn't even belong here but you know maybe off to the side or something i guess like that'd be kind of cool i don't know so what i'm going to do is like work now i was working on this highlight i'm trying to see how because I wanted to make her more of a, like a central piece, make her brighter. So I was trying to think of maybe using Blend If to hide some of the the shadows so they're not affected by that highlight here. And I'm using the fill opacity. And by the way, I, I show this all the time and I can show it like in a couple of minutes because we were about to do the uh, design review. But when you paint with white and you double click to the side of the layer to bring up the layer style window, you can change the blending mode to color dodge and if you uncheck transparency shapes layers you see how that it creates that glow effect see that and then if you reduce opacity it doesn't look that good but if you reduce the fill ah it looks much better see that really cool um technique to make things glow so maybe maybe it'll make her hands glow or something like that so yeah let me know if you guys like that technique in the chat um, well, I'm back on. Oh, you're back on. Cool, Lisa. I'm let back. me let me show your screen. By the way, two minutes for the design feedback, guys. So submit your work into Discord, behands.net slash challenge slash Photoshop in the number two box. Click on the join the community chat, and we'll be reviewing the work shortly. Okay. So to do auto color, which I lose, learned from Jesus Ramirez, is you make Who? a curve. <laughs> And then um, you're a silly man. And I'm holding the option key down when I select the um, add a new adjustment layer. So I can name it, name it whatever you want, but please just name it. And then when you're on the file, this is very important. You need to be not on the mask of the adjustment layer. You need to be on the code or the, the little box with the line. And in fact, mm -hmm. I often throw the mask away just so I don't have to worry about it. And then I'm gonna pull my properties menu out here so you can see it. And what you want to do is hold the option key or control or the alt key on a PC and hit auto. And when you've done that, it's done nothing you need yet. We're not here yet. What you want to do is you want to go to one of these enhance per can channel contrast or fine dark, as long as you see the shadow, midtone, and highlight boxes. And I'm going to click on the color for the shadow and I'm going to take the eyedropper and go into the piece and pick the shadow color that the piece has. I'm going to hit okay 
The mid-tone is probably not as important. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to click a mid-tone color. I'm going to hit OK. And then on this one, it's really the highlight and the shadows that matter. So I click on the little box for the highlight color, and I pick the highlight color for the back. Mm -hmm. And then you hit OK, and then it's going to say, hey, do you want to save these as your new target color? Photoshop knows you don't. That's why the no is already highlighted. And I'm yep. done. Now, I might want to do the contrast, but that's it. I'm done. That was two seconds. Hey, Zeus Ramirez, thank you for that. Now, let me You're show it to you in a much more complicated way. And I freaking love this thing. It's all I have to say. It's literally, it changed my life. So yesterday, I was struggling to try to remember the name of Whiplash that I tried to... Uh, emulate or I was talking about anyway. So let's say the client comes up and says, Hey, this HBO show unscripted. We really want that color palette. Can you imagine trying to do a curve to match that? It's a pain in the ass. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's hard. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that same thing we did before. I'm going to hold the option key and go to the curves. I'm only holding the option key so I can name it. Auto color, throw the mask away. Cause you don't need it. You're on the code, hold the option key, very important, alt or option key, click on the auto button. You get this dialog box. You've got to go in here and pick either enhance channel contrast or find dark lights, and then click on the shadows, go into the shadow of the piece, hit okay, go to the midtones, try to find a midtone that, that looks about right, and then go to the highlight. Now, this is really important. While you're in here, you can mess with it. But the minute you hit OK, you're done, and you'll have to start over. So basically, at this point, you want to look at it and go, hmm, is that right? Do I want to change that shadow color to be either a little darker, a little lighter, a little greener? So you have a lot of flexibility here. And let's say, and I can move my windows. And let's say I think the blacks are too hot, too, too dark. I can slide the blacks up. I'm going to hit OK. Hit OK again, new target color. And I don't know about you, I'm pretty decent at curves and doing color. Yeah. It would have taken me forever to build this curve, forever. That's the curve, and look. And you can use that for whatever piece. So let's say this job, this was a job called copper. They wanted the same color. Well, once you have the color, you have the color. So, hey Zeus, would you know how you could save a color out? out into a library so you could use oh, it later yeah <laughs> you want me you want me you want me, you want me to show that i do all right so cool. while jesus is getting that ready i just want to show you on the handouts that you can get there is uh on the dropbox and there is a link there is a step to how to step by step that you guys can refer to that will show you how to do it okay sounds good now before we finish i just gotta do one last thing to my to my poster that I'm working with here and then I'll show you guys my final result and I don't have time for this because I gotta show um, that one quick thing and then we gotta do the design review feedback so anyway super stylized so busy. super stylized but it is what it is there there it is guys that's my final result after my computer crashed and my file was super crazy where I know we're three minutes behind schedule to do the design feedback but really really quick I'm gonna show you what Lisa was talking about so um, basically, if you wanted to create a style, like, and I'm just going to use this image just because of the lack of time, and the, the, the result doesn't matter, so don't worry about the, the way this looks, right? So I'm making this look green, and maybe I have another adjustment layer that adds saturation, and then maybe I have another adjustment layer that applies maybe like, I don't know, let me think. It doesn't really matter, right? So I'll just do this graded map, but then I'll reduce the opacity and it just creates that, that weird effect, right? So like, how do you save all this? Well, what I would re recommend is putting it into a group like so, and that creates my effect there. And then the cool thing that you can do is you can drag that into a libraries and then just drop it into your library, right? So that's, that's gonna be like your color grade. So anytime you wanna use exactly that same effect, what you can do is just drag it out. But if you just drag it out, it's not gonna work. What you need to do is drag it out holding the Alt key on Windows, that's the Option key on the Mac. And when you drag it out, you have all those adjustment layers. So it's a way of saving your color grades um, and still keeping the layers editable. You can save color lookup tables, it will give you the same result, but you will not have your editable adjustment layers. I, and this is really, really, really important. 
first of all, I did not know this, so thank you, because now I'm going to forever use this, so I thank you again. Yeah. So there's two different ways of doing it. The way you did it, it's editable, which is great if you want that that variety. And then the color lookup is great if you don't want it edible, like your client has locked down a look. So I have, I don't know if you can see it on my screen because it's a little bit yeah. small, but I have the Avengers from um, IMP Awards. I looked up the Avengers. Now when they did the Avengers, they locked down a color look. And you don't want to send that to a bunch of people all fully layered so people can accidentally turn something on or off. You want to have it locked down. So the color lookup table would be great for something like this so that it's locked in and no one will change it. Production. Yep. Okay, so it looks like I'm still having uh, technical difficulties. Lisa, any way that we could um, connect to your screen and, th and that's how we do the review? Because I'm having more technical okay. difficulties on my screen, unfortunately. Um, so if you bring up the Discord see. page. Yeah, I'm on a different computer, so give me one minute. Yep, and, and if, if not, I'll be, I might be able to get it back up um, sorry about that, guys. Yeah. I'm not really sure why I'm having so many uh, technical like, difficulties today. Give me one minute. I'll see if I can get this over. All right. Yep, and that's... Uh, the link on the chat there, um, Tim posted the link on the chat. Thank you so much for posting the link to Discord on the chat, Tim. So that's what we're gonna be doing the review. And if you... You're just gonna have to walk me through it. I scroll all the way down, correct? Yeah, on the left-hand side, um, you'll be able to see the current challenge. That's right. And if you yep, don't mind... Not, uh, I think I... If you don't mind maximizing your screen, please. There we go, just so it takes over the entire window. Uh, perfect. Cool. Yep. No worries. So this is the design feedback where Lisa and I are going to give you our thoughts on today's challenge, which was ran by Kathleen Martin. And it was creating this cool looking torn paper lion design thing in Photoshop. <laughs> As Steve said, so Suze is that wacky UK internet. You know what, Steve? I believe so. My laptop does not like the internet here in the UK. I don't know why. It just doesn't like it. And other people's computers, like in the same area, work fantabulous. But mine, for whatever reason, is that American modem inside of it, I'm guessing. I don't know. Oh, well. <laughs> hey, honey, these days, if it teaches us anything, it's all about being flexible. That's right. So. Cool. We so are let's, being flexible. So let's check it out. And I can see this. I can see your screen, Lisa. So that's the uh, cool. piece that we're going to work and with. And I, I can't see the name of whoever did it. Uh, so I'm sorry. I don't have the author's name visible. Cool. No Unless worries. I click out. Yeah, no so, worries. You can scroll up and we'll check it out. Yeah. So Gerald. Gerald. Gerard. Awesome. Yeah. Gerard. Sorry. No worries. Awesome. So um, I'll let you, since you're, you're manning cool. the... Yeah. Um, so uh, this is cool. Um, there is the technique. It, it's a good exercise. I think the type is a huge problem. So while it's a great start, when we were talking about the comps before, the, the uh, light and dark, light and dark, there needs to be a bit of separation. So perhaps a little separate tonal separation between the bird and mm -hmm. the tigers. And then the type has to be really reconsidered, like figure out what your subject is. Is your subject the type or is it the image? Yeah. And then have that come forward. Yeah, I agree. And and uh, I mean, just to reiterate, the type is probably like the, the weakest part of this composite. If you if you were to fix the type, I think it would make a huge, huge difference without touching anything else. But I still would take Lisa's suggestion and take it further with the separation. Yeah. That dust brush right behind that bird would work perfect. Awesome. Okay, so um, are we going just for the tiger pictures? Um, for now, yeah. And if we have more time, okay. we can review some of the other so ones. So Tan did this piece? <laughs> Oh, cutie bear. Oh, play at now, home. See, it, play at home. That's the name. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you, this is already better because you can read it. Like everything's got a hierarchy to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what I would suggest. Maybe a, a little more context. Like maybe the dog wants a drop shadow because it's got such a, a, a photographic feel to it. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing, like, 
sometimes you have to decide where you want to go, right? Do you want to go with the photographic style? Do you want to go like the surreal style where it doesn't really matter if you have yeah. shadows and, and all these other things? And in this case, like you said, the photo feels like it wants to be real. So it feels like at the very least a contact shadow on the paws, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Or, you know, another thing, a white outline around this, like, you know, when it looks like it's cut out by paper. Mm hmm because the swashes kind of feel like they're cut out or even like a cyan might help, like give it a container. Right. I don't know, just an idea. Yep. Cool. Oh, look at this one. <laughs> I love this. Oh, this one's super cool. It's just so funny because it's just kind of, I'm sure how many of us feel right now. Um, I have to say, I love the, 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 cartoon drawing of the girl jumping in mm -hmm. I think the guy in the mouth shouldn't be there or the guy in the mouth should be drawn as well oh wow yeah I didn't even see him yeah yeah because that way it'll make it it makes it kind of an interplay between drawing and photo and yeah and the guy the scale of the guy is all wrong for the for the piece mm -hmm. so either take it one way or the other that is a suggest. that is a really good suggestion Lisa I, I'm totally with you on that I definitely would have I mean, because if you remove him, I think, you know, it's almost, it'd be funny. It'd be, it'd be, it'd, it'd, yeah, it'll be better. So, yeah. uh, so I think that tiger needs its ears. <laughs> oh, that's Find true. Find some ears. Or, or do, I don't know about tigers, but do, the, do they do those things that cat do where they push their ears back? You know what I mean? Yeah, they might, but graphically it needs mm -hmm. the ears because okay. it's, it's making a round and it's soft and you want that B at the top. Definitely agree. <laughs> oh. Very sweet. I think um, I think it's heading in the right direction. I think there needs to be some color unity. And I would suggest, it's very cute. I would suggest actually darkening the top to mm -hmm. match the dark of the orange and let the, the rabbits be the, the focal point. Right. And then I would pay a little more attention to the shape that the shapes in the back are making. What is that design? Like, what are those lines doing? Yeah. Uh, because if those were just designed a little better, this this compositionally could feel stronger. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. And also, like, I don't mind having all the faces in the image, but I think that having too many colors is distracting. Like, I see some green, some, what is that, yeah. red, pink. So maybe maybe if they were, if they were all sepia tone, then that would be probably better. Like completely. Absolutely. It would limit the color palette. Yeah. Yeah. And cool. once again, color.adobe.com. We talked about it yesterday. Yeah. Oh, that was super cool. Containers. Is that part of this whole thing too, you think? I think so, because it's, it's it's a torn edge effect. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, I really like the edging on this. It's done really well. And the composition's great. Like the scale, you have something large mm -hmm. and then smaller. So you have hierarchy, right. a first read, second read, third read. Yeah, no, I, I think it's great. And also like the person paid really good and i'm sorry i don't remember the person's name but I'm sorry. he or she um elroy 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 paid good attention into um, where people are facing so it feels cohesive not, you know people are not looking all over the place or it feels confusing so i think it feels it feels like a whole so yeah really good job it, on this that. is yeah this is designed so well and uh, a, a big suggestion that i think would really put this over the edge in terms of positive mm -hmm. is the hot orange in the bottom corner is really distracting because color is also a hierarchy right i would do that autumn color trick we yeah. just showed you yeah on that picture and make it match the tonal value of the picture above the top picture and then this piece will look fantastic that's what i suggest all right and it's a very good suggestion cool all right let's see all right, my computer's getting a little cranky pinky with me all right I think um, I think on this one, it's again, where are you looking? What's the subject? Mm -hmm. I get the cage idea. So I would suggest working on, um, again, I keep saying this word, I'm sorry, it's hierarchy. So mm -hmm. there's too much color and too confusing. You gotta yeah. minimize this a little bit. Like what if the background was more neutral or monochromatic yeah. so that the orange of the tigers allowed them to read? Yeah, I, I agree with that. The, the background is just too busy. Uh, yeah. especially because of the lines in the foreground I'm yeah. gay I don't know if they're trying to make make it seem as if the tigers are caged you know yeah. but those lines become too busy with that specifically with that background so and if they if you want it to be bl the blurred lines of the cage 
then those lines should be huge mm -hmm. and only like four of them because if the if the cage was right in the for super super foreground and out mm -hmm. of focus yeah. you only need like three lines three to six lines not sure. all these and then you could see the tigers and you'd still get the look of oh i'm looking for a blurred line you know depth of field for sure cool how are we doing on time honey oh this we got about 15 minutes okay great now again, this this looks like it's got a color lookup table or like a cohesive color over the top of it, which is making it meld better. Mm -hmm. um, it's not quite there, it's close. I think yeah. it's close. Yeah. Um, so it, it's mm -hmm. not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, they do have, I, I just, I usually like things in threes, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like there's like four subjects that I mean there's three tigers and then that one woman so maybe remove one of the one of the tigers and then I don't know keep it a little more balanced. Do you know what's interesting is when you have graphic shapes, mm -hmm. you almost have to look at the graphic shapes not with the subject in it but mm -hmm. just the shapes because mm -hmm. they are such a huge subject and the design composition of the shapes is too busy. Yeah. So like the diagonal bottom right coming in from play at home, if you took that out, that would yeah. already help yeah. tremendously. And then if you look at the scale, you've got the hierarchy of the, the tiger, which is great. That's why this is so close, I think. The hierarchy of mm -hmm. the tiger, but then the other shapes all have almost the same weight. Right. Visual weight. So the girl, even though the girl is a smaller strip, because she's so light, she's got more visual weight. And so they're actually all the same and you need like a, a three hierarchy, first right. read, second read, third read, but it's a great start and the color is getting there. Definitely getting there. Daniel Ekhoff. It's not part of the challenge, but I love that. Yeah. It um, looks gorgeous. But just awesome. Awesome piece. Um, again, this is kind of the same story, isn't it? Hey Zeus, like the, the, you, you talked about the, the subjects, having too many subjects. Mm -hmm. And color-wise, the daisies are are reading so strongly. And I bet if you took the green, used a hue saturation and desaturated the green, yeah. this would already... Oh, it was, but I feel that some areas are too dark and other areas not dark enough. So maybe work with value a little better. Yeah. yeah. Well, like the... I, I don't know if it's a llama. I'm sorry, I don't know my animals. Uh, but the rock, bottom right corner, the eyes, look like holes. Mm -hmm. So if the shadow value of that was brought way up, way up, yeah. then that could that shape would read better. Yep. By you the know way, what? Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, please. I was going to say, an art teacher told me once, and it's a really great tip. Take your piece and flip it upside down and, and horizontal mm -hmm. and look at it just for the shapes. Yep. Does that make sense? And then it'll help you figure out because our eye gets confused by the subject. Right. And if you flip it and turn it upside down, then you just look at shapes, shapes mm -hmm. and color. And also uh, Photoshop really doesn't do, I mean, I guess it does it if you flip the entire canvas, but there's a new feature in Photoshop. I think it was added 20, what, 15 or something like that, 2016, maybe somebody in the chat would correct me. But if you go into, and actually, why don't I show you guys that? If you go into um, view, there's a flip horizontal option. It just flips the image horizontally. So that, that way you could see it like in a new way and then maybe spot different mistakes or different things that you didn't see before. Cause your eyes get so used to looking at the same yep. thing for hours and hours and hours. Yep. So just by flipping it, um, you see it in a new way. And this is not actually the starting pixels. It's just changing the way the file is displayed in your screen. If you were to go into image, um, you know, image rotation and then flip the canvas horizontal, you're actually the starting pixels and that will take some time to flip the canvas, especially if you're working on a larger file with many, many, many layers. So this is just a quick way of just viewing the image in a different way. And once you save the image and close it and come back, back up, it'll open it up in the normal way. So this is not really changing your image, it's just changing the way it's displayed. Yeah. Cool. And also if you have a printer and you print it, print your piece out and put it in like the refrigerator or in the bathroom. I'm not kidding. And then you walk in and you're not thinking about it and then you see it and suddenly you'll exactly see what it's missing or what it needs. It's a mm -hmm. great technique. As long as there's light in the room. For sure. And I was just Cool, gonna... shall we talk about this next one? Or, yeah. or no, go right, okay? go right ahead. 
Awesome. Um, so once again, it's that color thing. I feel like that magenta, it's a great start and the, the tiger's got good hierarchy, mm -hmm. but that magenta strip is killing me. Yeah. And um, I think, yeah, if you just block that out, take it out maybe even, yeah. <laughs> uh, you might be there. Also, um, we, again, we talked about it yesterday, color.adobe.com. If you want to see what colors look with, look good, good with green and you don't know, check out color.adobe.com or the yeah. extensions uh, tab in Photoshop window, extensions, color themes. Well, this is fun. This And this is feeling more cohesive to me. Definitely more uh, homogenous, let's just say. Mm -hmm. There's a little thing that's making me kind of nutsy cuckoo bananas. So the play at home is in the foreground. Yep, and the Y. And the Y is yeah. behind yeah. the other thing, but the, 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 the strip, but that back strip is behind the tiger. Yeah. So I think you got to be careful. Like you got to make sure your planes make sense. Definitely, definitely agree. And uh, I think it's a little dangerous where you cut the Y. I think if you angled that cut down, so you see a little more of the, of the extender on the yeah. Y, it'll look a little more elegant. Yeah, and we talked about that yesterday with a different piece where if you cut too much of the letter, you really can't tell what it is. So you have to make it obvious that it's a Y and not, you know, a V or something else or an X or, you know, what, I don't know what yeah. other letter it could be. Well, and that's a super good point, Jesus, because if you squint, if everyone squints down and looks at that right now, it 100% looks like a V. Yeah. Because the Y disappears, the, the tail disappears too much. All right, so well how, many, how many of you squinted? Because I squinted. You guys could probably see in the replay that I'm like squinting, looking at what you said, Lisa. Well, uh, squinting helps. I do it all the time. Yeah. I think that's it on, unless... You know what? So this is not the... Oh, let me just show one thing uh, be related to squinting. So one thing that I do, <laughs> like, c for composites, it's um, I just zoom way out like that and see how it looks. Because a lot of times when it's like that small, you might see like you might be able to see like a piece that it's either too dark or too bright. So that's almost like squinting. And then I'll just zoom back and be like, oh yeah, this piece right here was too dark or something. And, yeah. and so zooming out is another thing that I do often. And then zoom yeah. Back in. And do you find he's just I find like if I you don't want to be always working like when I'm retouching skin, right up close. You got to come in or out because what you'll end up doing is retouch out the shape. Right. By mistake. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so we got about this... um, five minutes. Oh no, we got we got three minutes actually. Oh, okay. So why do we want to talk about this last one? And then let's I got talk some... about this last one. Yes. Okay. Cool. So I, the color palette on this is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. I love it. Um, the play at home for me, the the e disappearing is too much because I can't quite read it, and I'm right. not sure why it's disappearing. Yeah. And I think the scale. So here we're going to squint again. If you put your fingers up and you put the weight of the letters like the, the height of the letters it's kind of the same scale visually as the the tiger mm -hmm. so maybe just go ahead and make the play at home a little smaller and put it off to the bottom right hand corner it yep. might still cross over the, the the tiger but just a little over no, I, I definitely agree. Couldn't say more. Lisa, we got about two minutes before like, okay. we end the stream. So if you want to show something, if it's 30 seconds, um, then let's do it. Yeah. Or actually, yeah. while you get ready, let me just do the schedule and then we'll show you guys one last thing. So we cool. got the schedule for the day. We started the day with Howard Pinsky at 7.30 doing a Get Started with Adobe XD. Then we had Kathleen Martin doing the daily creative challenge that you guys just saw us review. And then the best stream of the day, of course, Lisa Carney and me doing a Photoshop compositing battle. And right after us, we have Julia Masalska doing the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. Then we have Nick Schaefe with Claudi from Print My Soul doing a graphic design stream. Then we have Jesse doing an XD Daily Creative Challenge. And you were talking about Kyle Webster earlier, Lisa. He's going to be on at 2.30 p.m. Pacific doing a draw along. And we're going to end the day with Voodoo Val and Panda at 3 p.m. doing a design off. So make sure that you stick around and check out all the different presenters for the day. Julia Masalska is in the chat. She's ready for her daily creative challenge. It's going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Lisa, we literally have like 30 seconds. So if you okay. Want so inside the folder, there is a, a file called got all these different color corrections you can use. And Jesus has now showed you how you can use those in color libraries by dragging them over. The mm -hmm. brushes are free again. Jesus's great tip about saving your heading. You can find me on Creative Live. I've got workshops, brush workshops, all sorts of stuff. 
You can also find me on a photomentor.com and they are offering you guys a coupon of 20% off any of the mentoring sessions. There the you code go. is find me one and I think it's good till May 5th. Awesome. That's so it. So, and you guys can find me at photoshoptrainingchannel.com on YouTube. Um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with my YouTube channel. I just posted a video tutorial yesterday on creating a movie poster. So it's it's, great. Tie, it ties into this whole thing that we're doing. So you can check that out now, Photoshop Training Channel on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for being with us. It was a lot of fun. Um, oh, super. so this is my final piece. I don't know if you have your piece up, Lisa, so oh, people sorry. Could, could see it. And then we gotta go. <laughs> So this is my final piece and Lisa if and that is Lisa's right there. So thank you guys so much for watching. It was really fun. Enjoy the rest of the streams. Julia is up next. Bye guys. Thanks so much.